Okay na ba? Yan. Yes, okay na. Yan, maraming, uh, maraming salamat. Uh, sige, um, sobrang, ano, sobrang enlightening tsaka entertaining nung, nung talk ni Sorby. Uh, yun, isa, isa yung plugins actually. Sa, kaya hindi ko na sinama yung plugins dito sa tips and tricks kasi nung nakita kong ay meron na may, may talk si Sorby about, ano, about, about plugins. Yun, at least mababawasan yung ano ko, yung isasabay ko. Pero yeah, uh, just some addition to, to dun sa dun sa napakagat ng presentation ni, ni Sorby. Uh, some QGS tips and tricks. Medyo uh, mag-live ano tayo. Uh, live 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 working sa so medyo workshop siya. Um, I won't go over this kasi kilala niyo naman ako it sinabi ko na dun sa mga naunang presentation tsaka sa first. So my name is Ben if you are interested in what I do uh, you can follow those links. Um, I I yun nga through BNHR Ben Hur, I provide data and open data and open geospatial consulting training tsaka support services. So data literacy, data culture, open geospatial like grass uh, PostGIS, Geonode, Leaflet, and of course, QGIS. So, siguro about about dun lang. Uh, so in terms of QGIS, uh, BNHR is a QGIS certifying organization. So, the courses are vetted by the QGIS Project Steering Committee. I can issue <laughs> official QGIS certificates. Uh, and those certification fee is donated back to QGIS to help support and maintain it. Um, during the first run of yung bite-sized QGIS ko a few months ago, I had 12 people. Uh, avail of certification and as far as I know uh, and correct me if I'm wrong sila yung first 12 people sa Pilipinas na actually nagka nakakuha ng certification na ganito or nag-avail ng QGIS certification uh, and then I'm currently having my second run right now uh, with with a few more people uh, I, I'd i like to make my certificates mappy then so which is why in the first run I had a known pleasure style map ng Philippines. And for this run, I am the certificate I'll be providing has this, you know, Dermido markers na style ng Pilipinas from our very own Hana Dermido. So, so yun. Uh, aside from that, I'm also a QGIS sustaining member. So I financially support QGIS uh, in my own little way. Um, and as far as I know, then I'm currently the only. Well, BNHR is currently the only and probably, I don't know, first sustaining member from the Philippines. But right now, currently, uh, 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 well, BNHR. So I try to be a good, um, you know, member of the open source community. Na, and, uh, hindi lang, hindi lang bumibig, nag, na kumukuha, pero it's a, it's a give and take relationship. Uh, I, you know, I get work from, from my, from QGIS. So the, the least I could do is probably, you know, provide support then sa, sa QGIS. Yan. So, QGIS tips and tricks. Ito na yung meat nung, ano, nung ating, nung ating pag-uusapan. Ano ba yung mga, yung mga bagay na pwede nating gawin sa QGIS? Um, this won't cover everything, uh, of course, but hopefully, uh, beginners and advancing from, from this workshop. Um, so, ano yung una? Very first thing, user profiles. Um, siguro pag unang bukas nyo ng QGIS, ganito yung makikita nyo. Ay, yung, yung pinakaunang bukas nyo. Uh, what are user profiles? User profiles were introduced nung QGIS 3.0 as a way na to allow you to compartmentalize you know, users and use cases uh, sa QGIS. What do I mean by that? Uh, yung user profiles, sinisave niya yung settings, ilang settings mo, like yung UI layout, ano yung mga plugins yung naka-install, uh, and other things like that sa isang, yun, sa isang profile. Uh, paano, saan siya useful? Uh, as I mentioned, useful siya to compartmentalize use cases and users. For example, meron kang, uh, if it's a shared computer na maraming taong gumagamit, pwedeng may individual user profile sila. Uh, another one is use cases. Uh, tingnan natin, so, sa example ni Sorby, marami siyang plugins, di ba? Pero hindi lang yun, napakadami pa. And there are plugins for different kinds of use cases. And sometimes, mapupuno na yung user interface mo na puro lang plugins. So what I'd, I like to do is, I have a user profile, for example, just remote sensing stuff. And then I have a user profile just for cartography stuff na design and map making and styling. Para I can just uh, switch around sa user profiles pa... Uh, 
kung may kailangan akong specific function na gagawin. Uh, uh, right now, I have like, I have a user profile for my trainings na malinis, walang laman, para when I start my trainings, lagi silang uh, start from ganito, from scratch. So, para hindi rin malito, especially if it's a beginner class. But I also have a user profile that I use kumbaga day to day, to day na yun yung may laman ng mga ginagamit kong plugins, ginagamit kong settings. So, to create user profiles, just go to user profiles and uh, new profile and it will ask you to create a new one. And then, if you want to change, just um, ganyan lang. So, I can select this one and it will open a new uh, QGIS ano, for me, uh, instance. Yun. So, this is, ano, this is an example of my day-to-day -day, uh, QGIS setup. Uh, ito yung user interface niya and ito yung ilang plugins na meron. So, ganito ko siya in order. Uh, this is very useful kasi muscle memory plays a, a big deal for if you want to optimize your work. So, ako sanay ako na ganito yung, yung mga kinalalagyan nung, nung, nung plugins ko or nung mapipindutin ko. And if someone messes that up, siguro hindi ka magiging ganun kabilis. So, having different user profiles work, uh, works with that. Yan. Um, User profiles, uh, next we have <laughs> world. So actually, um, merong ano, merong, merong, si QGIS ay may mga Easter eggs na pwede nyong makita by typing words dito sa coordinate bar. One of them is world. So if you actually type world sa coordinate bar, it will load, it will load a, yeah, a world map. It will load the world map for you. Yeah. Just by typing the word, you know, word. So there are a lot more. Kung wala kang data na makita, wala kang world map na makita, just type world sa coordinate, uh, coordinate bar. Uh, a lot of people, I think, have been asking then, can we, could we add, siguro, if you add, type Philippines, mag-load siya ng Philippine data or if type a country. It's it's entirely possible, although I don't, I'm not sure na na-implement na siya. But you can do it and then pwede nyong i-pull request sa, sa QGIS mismo. There are a lot more uh, Easter eggs aside from world, but I won't go over them. Uh, pwede nyo silang hanapin online. Eh, ano lang siguro, bonus, if you, if you type board sa coordinate bar, uh, kung board kayo, it's a good way to, ano, to, <laughs> to cure some of your boredom. Yan. So that's for world. Um, and then the next one is the style manager. Uh, QGIS para sa akin has uh, a very powerful uh, styling and cartography, you know, toolkit o kaya capabilities. And aside from yung usual or normal ano natin, styling from the styling panel or style, simple symbologies, uh, if you want to take or i-level up yung ating state cartography and map making skills. Sobrang laking tulong ng style manager. Uh, with the style manager, pwede rin tayong, I mean, kumuha at mag-share ng, well, mag-share ng styles natin at uh, kumuha ng styles galing sa iba. So, the style manager is under set uh, settings, style manager. So, if you open that up, it will open this, ano, this window. And ito yung mga available styles for you. Uh, Sometimes hindi ito masyadong pinapansin, especially if, you, if you're new to QGIS. Hindi mo alam na may mga built-in styles na pala. And you can actually get, you know, import and export styles from, from different places. For example, one of the bagong ngayon na pwedeng pagkuhanan ay yung StyleHub. StyleHub.github.io. It's, it's by class. Um, it's a way for us to share different styles. So pwede tayong kumuha dito. Uh, ng styles, we copy one of the styles we want and then we export it to QGIS. So for example, I can take this pattern, uh, different pattern styles. I can just simply copy that. I can go back to my to my QGIS and style manager and then I can do an import, export, uh, import items, URL, depending if it's a URL or a file. Uh, uh, post, po put the URL fetch items, it should tell you na eh, kinukuha niya ng style and then na-load niya yung mga styles na to, you can just select all of them and then click import. So once you do that, 
meron akong 70s wallpaper na existing. Yes to all. It would be here, uh, dito sa imported. And it would be available na sa QGIS ano mo, uh, styling panel. Yung styles natin ay makikita sa styling panel uh, dito, dito sa baba, itong part na to. These are the styles na pwede natin gamitin. So we can actually search then for that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, oh, yun, may style na tayo na nalagay from the style manager. Uh, ano yung next na pwede natin uh, gawin? Special bookmarks. So, yun. First, let's apply one of our styles, for example. Uh, ay, balik ko yung ano, world map ko. So, balik ko yung world map ko. And then, I can select one of the styles, for example. Um, let's go with Dermido maps. Oh, so you can select you can select the style and apply it automatically sa, sa, sa layer mo. And then you can even, you know, modify it to suit your well, to suit your taste. Uh ganun lang kadali. And if people keep are a lot of people are actually sharing their styles already sa ano, sa online and sa 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 QGIS. There's another way for you to get it. It's on plugins that qjs.org slash styles. So dito naman, you can download the files and then import them into QGIS as files. Yun. So, oh, style manager, and then yung sabi ko next, uh, yung sinabi ko kanina na susunod natin ay yung special bookmarks. Special bookmarks, ano yung, ano yung ginagawa ng special bookmarks? From, from their name, binubookmark nila yung isang extent. So for example, I want to bookmark itong extent na to. Ng, ng Pilipinas. Uh, I can go to special bookmarks under the ano, browser panel. So, kung hindi nyo makita siya, yung mga panels natin nasa view, and then panels, and then dito natin makikita. Pag may check, ibig sabihin visible yung panel na yun. So, under the browser panel, there's this special bookmarks na ano, drop down, and there's project bookmarks or user bookmarks. So, yung user bookmarks, nakasave siya per, per user, while your project bookmarks naka-save kasama nung, nung project anong project file mo. So, um, use cases nito, uh, for a project, for example, if you're mapping different areas uh, simultaneously, para hindi ka na mag-zoom uh, to layer, zoom to layer, pwedeng project, pwedeng bookmarks na lang yung gamitin mo. Uh, if you're, as a user naman, kung lagi kang nagmamapa ng Pilipinas and you want to load, nag-load ka ng global data, tapos gusto mong, Diretso sa Pilipinas agad, you can add a bookmark. So, to do that, it's quite simple. Let's add a user book uh, bookmark na uh, special bookmark. And then, it will open this prompt. And then, ask you ano yung, anong name ng bookmark, tsaka anong klaseng extent, anong extent niya, or if you want to put in a, a group. So, I can say PHL uh, and save it. And then, sige, gawa pa tayo isa uh, bilang ako'y Bicolano. Let's go here. Uh, add ulit tayo ng new special bookmark. Let's say Bicol. Uh, then save it. So, kahit sa ako pumunta, if I click on this one, it will take me back to that bookmark. Kahit mawala ako dyan, if I click on this one, it will take me to that special bookmark. So, sobrang useful niya, especially if you're, you're working with... Uh, global data or data na uh, mas malaki yung extent kesa dun sa kailangan mong imap or kailangan mong uh, trabahuhan. Yan. So, yun yung ano, yun yung sa sa special bookmarks so, natin. The next one, um, hopefully I'm not going too fast, uh, decorations and exporting the map canvas. Um, siguro na natuwa na tayo dito and gusto nating i- Well, nagtawa tayo dito sa ano sa sa mapa nung nung Bicol. And then gusto natin tong i-share with friends itong mapa na to. Pero tinatamad tayong pumunta sa project print layout at gumawa ng gumawa ng print layout. Uh, what do we do? Yung iba sabihin screenshot mo na lang or or uh, ano mo i i screen capture mo na lang. But there's actually a way to do it na mas ano, mas maganda and that is to Uh, export the canvas as an image or as a PDF, as a map. So, we can do that by project, import, export, export map to image, export map to PDF, and it will uh, export your map. 
Ang mas maganda dito as compared to just you no know, taking a screenshot, kaya mo makontrol yung quality. So if I if I want to have a be better quality than a screenshot, pero kung tungo ng 300 DPI, and I could have a, a file na ganon yung kung ba ganon yung resolution, ganon yung resolution, ganon yung size. Um, that that can also be accessed uh, from ano from 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 here. Uh, sa ano sa sa tool sa toolbars natin. So that's one of the easiest way kung ayaw mong kung ayaw mong gumawa ng print layout kasi yun nga naman who has time to create print layouts kung simple lang yung gusto mong ipakita. Uh, but what if sabi mo okay pwede ko palang gawin yun pero um, hindi ko alam na ano hindi ko alam na ay gusto ko maglagay ng grid gusto ko maglagay ng other map elements map details pwede ko bang gawin yun? Yes, the answer is yes. Uh, through decorations. So, sa view, meron siyang decorations. And these decorations decorate your map canvas. Uh, it, it decorates your, your map canvas. Um, it allows you to add grids. It allows you to, to add a scale bar, a north arrow, uh, title label, and other stuff. So, we can add, say, for example, a scale bar. Uh, enable it. Uh, okay, so maglalagay siya na scale bar, scale bar dito sa taas. Oh, we can also do add sa well a grid or for example um, decorations north arrow most common. You can choose the north arrow you want. Let's just go with the default. Uh, okay, tapos lalagyan dito north arrow. And then I can I can once again just import export this to an image for a map. And ito yung kakalabasan niya. So, sobrang dali lang. I mean, madali siya com compared sa idadaan mo pa sa sa ano sa print layout, especially kung hindi naman hindi mo naman kailangan yung ibang ano, ibang stuff sa print layout at kailangan mo lang ng mabilis na map. So, let's just remove those first. So, kung katanggalin mo sila, just go back to view decorations at kung ano siya and just disable them. So, okay. Yun. So, so nakita na natin uh, style manager, we also looked at uh, decorations and exporting directly from the canvas. Uh, the next one is preview modes. Yun. So, maganda to. Na, na alala ko kanina na mention din ni ano, na mention ni sa presentation ni ni, ni Bunny about uh, 'di ba, yung pagiging tactile nung nung ginawa niyang uh, data kasi may mga taong different way of learning yung pagiging inclusive sa visualizations mo or sa presentations mo uh, when i was a young map maker or i was a young ano person sa GIS kung ano yung feeling ko maganda yun lang yung ginagawa ko i, I didn't really think about yung whole inclusion thing when it comes to creating my maps but feeling ko maganda siya or pogi yung mapa okay na yun para sa akin but then as a, as you as you become more ano siguro uh naman serious but you, as you become older uh you you realize na no you realize na mas broad yung mundo mas malawak yung mundo and there are people out there na for example may visual impairments na hindi map appreciate yung mapa mo and this is where yung ba, may mayroon silang uh, color blindness for example so this is where yung preview modes come in preview modes allow you to ano allow you to preview yung what your map would look like from the point of view of uh, some uh, examples of color blindness, tapos ng what if shy fit pinoto copy or finax. So we can try to do that. Uh, let's let's create a simple graduated symbology for for this map. Um, population ng 2015, pretty breaks. So yan. So ganito yung normal if I print it as a normal as a person with ano uh, with no visual impairments ganito ko siya makikita it's all the reds and if I want to see how it looks like for someone with ano uh, with visual impairment I can go to preview mode simulate color blindness either re red or I think this is I'm not sure kung green uh so one of those uh, uh, color blindness so if you click that makikita mong magbabago siya this is how it would look like to someone with that color blindness uh, then you can also simulate the other one. This is how it would look like for someone with that kind of ano, color color blindness. Or for example, what if pinoto copy lang yung mapa mo after mong ginawa uh, gawin, ba? Sa mga modules ng ano ng natin ng bata pag may exam, uh, colored yung graph pero 
photocopied so hindi mo ma hindi mo makita yung difference dun sa mga sa mga tanong pwede mo ring ma-simulate yan sa queue so makikita mo if how your map would look like kung distinguishable ba siya if if it's photocopied um, the good thing with queue is that if you actually use yung existing color ramps niya and there are so many um, maraming ano um, visual inclusive na color ramps you can go to Color Brewer to, to get some. You can go to this palette. Pero sa QGIS, if you go to Color Ramps and actually, for example, create create new Color Ramp, meron na siyang existing, like CPTCT and, and Color Brewer Color Ramps na pwede mong piliin. Tapos it would ask you anong klaseng Color Ramp yung gusto mo. Discrete, continuous, and stuff like that. So if you want, if you just want to go back dun sa ano mo, sa sa original mo. Uh, you can just go to view. Uh, again, preview mode normal. So that's how yung normal, ano, yung normal, uh, normal map would look like. Yun. So that's for preview modes. Um, it's good to practice this, especially if um, medyo, uh, you don't know kung merong magkakaroon ka ng ng person or participant or client na may visual Im impairment or may may uh, color blindness uh, we have to be ano we have to be aware of that na uh, hindi dahil hindi tayo color blind walang mga tao na ano <laughs> uh, na color blind so uh, let them appreciate your maps then so as much as possible let's use inclusive you know colors in in creating our maps yun uh, that's for the preview modes um, the next one uh, uh, mutually exclusive layer groups. So I'm not sure if people uh, are familiar na kayo dito. This is a relatively new feature. Uh, what mutually exclusive layer groups from, from the name palang, uh, it's very ano naman, very, buti na lang very self-explanatory yung, yung name nila. Uh, you can uh, have a layer group wherein if one layer is selected, uh, all other layers become unselected or they don't appear. Kumbaga. So there's that. Well, for example, we can go to QJS again. Um, dito sa group na to, si mutually exclusive layer groups. I have three uh, base maps. And itong feature na to, it's very useful for base maps. Kasi minsan isang base map lang naman kailangan. Eh. Kaya siya yung base map. Diba? So here I have three base maps. Uh, Stamen Terrain. Carto DV Positron and OSM, of course. And um, gusto ko na pwede ako mag-select ng base map na hindi ko na kailangang mag uh, mag ano nito, mag-click-click nito para palit-palitan sila. So the answer there is using yung mutual exclusive groups na function ng queue. So in the layer panel, if you create a group, add uh, add the layers there and right click on the group meron ditong mutually exclusive group so if you take that QJS will consider that group as mutually exclusive and if you select one that means you're deselecting the others or if one is visible everything else is not or are not visible so you can make this mutually exclusive so if I click on OSM if I click on CartoDB if I click on Stamen if I click on OSM ole, if I click on Stamen Oh, yan. Dinidisable or ginagawa niyang hindi visible yung others na hindi selected. So only one could be visible dito sa mutual exclusive groups. Very good to use uh, for, for base maps. Pwede rin naman for, for vector files. And ano, um, great then for, for, ano, for yun nga, para mas mapadali yung, yung buhay natin when we're doing uh, QGIS related stuff. So yan. We, have, we, have, we have that functionality recent as far as i know very recent lang so there's mutual exclusive groups and then we also have um the next one is layer order naman so ano yung layer order um by default if you notice the way that qgis renders your your layers i depende sa order niya sa layer panel di ba if nasa taas tong geoportal base map over these two vector layers, uh, matatabunan niya yung dalawang vector layers ko. Kasi, uh, well, yung ordering nila. Of course, I can always just, you know, reorder them dito and have them something do, do something like this. 
Um, yan. I could always do that. Na ano, na what, iba. What if sobrang dami ng layers and kailangan kong ayusin yung ayusin yung layer order niya. At uh, nakakalito na actually pag sobrang dami na ng layers. Hindi minsan ma, malilito ka na lang kung sino yung uunahin, sino yung sino yung hindi. Uh, so for this case, I have a Philippine geoportal base map from Namria. I have this ano outline ng uh, Albay again uh, home province represent and then I have this ano uh, shape file vector file of Albay uh, styled as a simple inverted polygon with a shape burst fill. Uh, technique kung gusto niyong gumawa ng magandang or makapag-focus sa isang lugar uh, use use your inverted polygons and maglagay kayo ng uh, for example, shape burst fill or even just a normal fill. And ang ganda ng magiging effect niya. So, normally, sabi ko nga, by default, yung layer order mo ay according dito. But QGIS has another panel, uh, view, panels, uh, layer order, where you can, you know, override yung, yung layer order na yun. Or you can you know, control the order of your of your layers. This is useful for fine-tuning uh, yung yung maps na gagawin mo uh, and kung gusto mong sa isang lugar lang yung pag-control mo ng ng order para hindi ka na malito dun sa ay hindi ka na mamroblema dun sa layer panel mo so pwedeng yung layers mo nasa layer panel lang lahat ng orders mo kung pa, sino yung nasa sino yung nasa baba sa layer order mo lang ilalagay so what it does so i have my layer order panel here it shows me my my layers kung mapapansin niyo wala dito yung styles yung yung layer name lang i can click on control uh, rendering order and yun, nagbago na siya kasi na, napalitan ko na. If I con click on control layering order pwede kong palitan yung yung order ng layers na to and mag ha, tawag dyan, mag susunod sa akin yung ano, yung yung, yung yung QGIS. So dito for example base map, outline tapos yung shape burst natin. So that's the normal. If I move this here Yun. Uh, yung order niya magiging below these two. Pero kung titingnan mo sa layers, walang nagbago. So dito sa layers, hindi nagbago yung order niya. Si layer order lang yung binago ko. But ano, uh, it, it has the same effect. Yun. Uh, very useful siya yun nga. Um, if you want to fine-tune your, your maps and if you want to separate yung styling mo, which is you can do here na makikita mo dito versus yung ordering mo ng layers. Uh, maganda rin na meron tayong ganong kumbaga hiwalayan nung dalawang activities na yun. So that's layer order. Um, and then the next one, kung makikita natin uh, for after layer orders is map themes. So ano yung map themes? Uh, map themes are a feature of layers wherein yung can create a theme and that theme uh, saves yung visibility ng layers at kung ano yung current style uh, nila ng mga visible layers na yun. So, saan siya useful? but but ko siya kailang or ba't ko siya gustong gamitin? Uh, two things actually uh, na very useful yung map themes natin. Uh, for example, I have this, again, provinces. I can make a simple uh, style siguro nitong province. Uh, I can just copy this and just paste it dito. Oops. Or I could just um, add a different style. Single symbol. Huh. Sagihin natin ito namang Dermido fill. Yun. So I have this uh, data, I have this map, uh, and I can uh, save this as a theme. So dito, dito sa mukhang mata, manage map themes, and I can add a theme, for example. Um, add theme, I can name this THL uh, Dormido. And then... Uh, for example, gagawa ako ng isa pang, ano, isa pang layer or isang mapa. For example, I want to duplicate this. Uh, I can duplicate this layer and then I can create a filter, for example. 
I just want to show yung province ay uh, Albay. Again, uh, Albay represent. And I want it, I want this to have a different style, for example. So, gagawa ako ng different style for this one. I, again, I could just select, say, diamond siguro. Yan. So, diamond plate. So, for this one naman, I can add another theme. So, uh, add theme, uh, Bicol Diamond. And then, click OK. Um, so, ano yung purpose ng themes? One is, kung gusto mong mag-compare ng dalawang styles uh, agad. So, it could be, I could just select, okay, um, page shelter. So, automatic papakita niya yung theme na yun. So it could be multiple layers, hindi lang isa. So that that's that that's possible. Or I could just, gusto ko lang pakita ko yung Bicol Diamond. Yun na lang din yung papakita niya. Um, one, yun yung one, isang purpose niya if you want to compare. The other one na mas useful is if you want to add multiple maps na different yung style, different yung, different yung, yung symbology, different yung laman sa isang, uh, print layout. So if you open, if you open a print layout, um, sige, pangalan natin map themes. And you have this print layout. We can add those two maps na using just the themes. So I can add a map, drag it here. Um, Siyempre yung makikita niya ngayon, di ba? Kung alam natin kung how, how QJS works, uh, kung ano yung visible sa map canvas, uh, kung ano yung visible sa, sa map canvas, yun yung makikita natin, syempre. But that can be overridden by, by map themes. So what we do is, yung map, uh, item properties, dun sa layers, pwede natin itik yung follow map theme, this one. So if you take that one, you can select actually kung anong theme yung gusto mo. So for me, that would be, dito siguro yung uh, Philippine na Dermudo styles. And uh, I can, for example, just uh, move this around para buong Pilipinas. There. And then if I want to add another map, uh, so I want to add another map. Uh, example, baliktad naman. Uh, yung nakashow ay yung ito. So I want to add a map nung kabila. So I want to add another map. I add another map here. Siyempre yung makikita niya, yun nga, kung ano yung visible. Pero this is not what I want. I want yung naka-diamond. So I click that. Uh, I select the map na, na, car, na ano. I select the current, I select the, the current map. Ito. I follow map theme. I select itong Bicol Diamond. And it will show me yung Bicol Diamond lang. And hindi siya, ano, uh, kumbaga, magiging lock siya dun sa theme na yun. Kung ano yung visible sa theme na yun, yun lang yung at ano yung styles yun yung makikita niya or yun yung ipapakita niya then you can just move the ano around you can just move the the things around uh, and kahit ano yung baguhin mo sa visibility dun sa sa, sa QGIS canvas basta naka-save yung themes mo yun yung mag appear dito so useful din siya if for example um magpapalit hindi ko kailangan palitan yung layout gusto ko lang palitan yung yung symbology. I could just change the theme, for example. Um, I could just say, um, palitan ko yung themes na to. Ito si, ano, um, si, balik tayo kay Bicol Diamond. Uh, gusto kong palitan siya, gawin kong ano, circle overlap. I could just theme, um, replace uh, Bicol Diamond. Yes. And dapat, uh, if we put it here and refresh it, automatic magpapalito. Kasi naka, nakakabit siya dun sa themes natin. Eh. So that's uh, another way to ano, optimize, fine-tune your, your map-making process. Yan. So okay na siguro siya. Okay na siguro tayo kay map themes. Uh, ano yung next? So merong, merong pang konti. Napapansin naman natin. Meron na akong ano, pre-baked na ano dito. Mga pre-baked na goodies para ano safe yung ano natin uh, pagpapa pag the demo so after map themes uh, layout extends yung sunod na ano um 
magandang ipakita. Uh, a layout extent shows you kung ano yung extent nung uh, layouts ng mga map mo sa print layout. So, that pala hindi ko muna sinarhan. For example, uh, layout map themes. Uh, meron tayong dalawang map pa dito. Ito at saka ito. So, we have a map themes na map na print layout. Uh, using yung using yung ating ano using yung ating uh, layout extent na decoration it's it's a decoration it's available under view decorations pwede nating makita yung mga extents na to dun sa canvas natin so example i have this uh sige yung world na lang Ayan. i have this world map uh, view decorations layout extents it will prompt you uh, kung paano mo gusto ipakita yung extent. The, the default is fine. And if you click OK, yung view, pasa na. Papakita niya sa iyo dapat kung nasaan yung mga yung mga extents na yun. So yeah. Yeah. So yun yung ano, yun yung yun naman yung ginagawa nung 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 map themes nga na ano na ay map themes nung nung layout nung layout extents. The next one uh, is geometry generators. Now I could spend an hour for on on geometry generators so i could i could spend like 3 3 hours on geometry generators kasi sobrang useful niya um geometry generators uh, from its name it's a style it's technically a styling technique na you can create different geometries from pre-existing geometries so you can style a point as a line you can style a line as a point you can style a polygon as as a point a polygon as a line and many other combinations using Ano, geometry generators and uh, QGIS expressions. So, dito for example, nasa atin, uh, sa geometry generators natin na, ano, I have this data. So, kung nakita nyo kanina sa presentation ko on basketball, uh, ito yung three-point shots ng UAAP Season 81, made three-pointers uh, sa court, sa half-court. And I want to recreate yung ginawa ko dati na, na distances. So, geometry generator yung sagot dun. Uh, I can actually use like uh, a command yung, yung join, join by hub. Pero matatagal lang pa ako. Ang dami kong kailangan gawin. I would have to make a point from, dito sa center nung, nung goal. And then create a line. Well, have an algorithm ra create a line for, for each of this. Uh, but I could just make a you know single symbol instead of simple marker uh geometry generator and then dito uh geometry type i want to make it align so i make the geometry type align string and this dito ko ilalagay yung command na magsasabi on how do i generate a line um from from that data so if you actually make this well gusto mo gawa ng line so make line so make line uh, for each geometry in your feature, uh, bit from each geometry in your feature to a point uh, stationed at zero zero. So yung make line tumatanggap siya ng dalawang parameters: the origin and the destination of the line, or destination origin depende sa ano mo. It's a line, so pareho lang na pareho lang din naman. Yung two endpoints nung nung line segment natin. So, yung, yung, itong dollar geometry that tells you kung ano yung geometry ng current feature. And then, itong make point naman, it's another QGIS expression that generates a geometry. It tells me, it tells QGIS na, okay, gawan mo ako ng point dito sa zero zero. So, now I have yung point nung, nung feature ko and yung zero zero. And then, I generate this line for that one. And then, I could just, ano, I could just edit Yung, yung line ko, make it instead of single symbol, you know, categorized, graduated, things like that. So I can just, I could, I could just edit that, for example, na papalitan ko na 
Uh, yan. So it's actually a point, pero I'm styling it as a line. Umaga. And you can do that. Uh, you can do that sa, sa, sa QGIS uh, using, yun nga, using your, your geometry generators. Yan. So, ano, again, I could go on and on sa geometry generators. There's, there's so many things na pwede natin gawin with geometry generators. Um, if you have, for example, if you have a set of points and you, and you want to create a polygon based on those set of points, instead of doing processing, pwede kang gumawa ng generator na make gagawa ka lang ng ng ano ng polygon na yun from those set of points and all the other stuff na very interesting so very powerful yung geometry generators na capabilities ng ng QGIS and i hope uh, i could have more time to 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 explain that pero there are a lot of sources then online do, that discuss yung power ng geometry generators and where you can use them um some attribute table stuff. Uh, ito medyo ano lang for for ano din uh, for kung gusto nyong mas optimize sa akin it works. Uh, I like dati if you if you do, di ba? If you open an attribute table, nagbubuka siya as a separate ano, a separate window. Pero yung uh, one of the recent features na dinagdag ng QI to have the attribute table doc. What this does is I can have multiple attribute tables open and nasa isang lugar lang sila. And that's really, ano, that's really useful kasi hindi na ako maghahanap-hanap kung nasaan yung attribute table ko. So if I open this second attribute table, bubukas lang siya dito as a tab. Yun. How do I activate this? Um, how do I activate this uh, under, ano, under settings natin? Uh, options. So, settings, options. Uh, dito sa data sources, sa feature attributes and table, you just tick on this one. Open new attribute tables as as doc windows. That would allow, well, that would tell QGIS na gusto mo yung, yung windows mo ng attribute table nakadock at nakatab instead of floating, kumbaga. Well, depende sa, ano, depende syempre yan sa, ano, sa gusto nyo. Kung mas comfortable kayo with the floating ones, of course, wala namang mas masama doon. Or if kung mas comfortable kayo sa ganito, at least now we have that option na i-dock yung attribute tables natin para hindi sila nawawala-wala. Yeah. What other things can we do sa attribute table? Um, a lot a lot of things. Yung iba, uh, you can actually, you know, organize your columns. So you can set the width. You can even hide columns. So pag sobrang dami for example ng ng columns sa or fields ng attribute ng attribute table mo, it's a good it's good practice to, you know, try to organize them and just wag mo na lang ipakita yung mga hindi mo kailangan. Uh, for example, ang kailangan ko lang naman ay income class population. So I could just click okay and yun, hindi na mga hindi na kasama yung mga hindi ko kailangan naman para sa ano and then there's also yung uh, conditional formatting. So what it does is it creates yun. If you've done conditional formatting sa ano, if you've done conditional formatting sa 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 spreadsheet, it's the same. You can add rules. We're in ba? Uh, ne ano yung name? Ano yung condition niya? Tapos ano yung ano yung kakalabasan niya. And if you do that, mag-conditional formatting yung, yung QGIS for you. Uh, now for example, if the number is less than less than ganito, uh, if population is less than 1,000, um, 1 million color green, if it's between uh, 1 million and 5 million uh, orange, and if it's more than 5 million red. So para makita mo rin agad, just from the attribute table, kung ano, um, kung ano yung ano mo oh, kung ano yung ano yung mga fields ay ano yung mga features na yon or yung mga rules na yon so that's something na pwede nating yun, pwede nyo paglaruan pwede nyo tingnan uh, sa attribute table kumbaga some attribute table magic yun. Uh, then the uh, locator bar uh, one of my favorites na dinagdag sa QGIS3 it's ano it 
it will be your best friend once you learn how to utilize it. Uh, promise, it will be your best friend. Kasi halos lahat ng la, karamihan na kayang gawin ni QGIS in-exposed sa locator bar. So, itong bottom left, control K is the locator bar. Ano yung ginagawa niya? Uh, anong ginagawa ng locator bar natin? Uh, a lot of things. It can be used to call actions. So, itong, itong strings na to or characters na to, if you put that before uh, a search, yun yung hahanapin niya. So, if I want to search for actions, I I put a dot before my search. If I want to use it as a calculator, I can put equals. So, I can I can actually use this as a calculator. Equals 100 plus 500. And I can copy that directly in case kailangan ko yung number na yun sa pagmamapa ko. Um, processing algorithms. Again, when I when I do my trainings, lagi kong tinuturo na if you can't find it sa, sa ano, sa, sa QJS user interface, just go to the locator and look for it. So you can look for clip. Yun. And if you just want ano, algorithms, yun. clip, yeah, if you want dissolve, so, pasta exposed siya as a processing algorithm dun sa processing toolbox, hahanapin siya ni, ni QGIS, uh, ni, ni Locator. So, yung mga plugins, as far as I know, hindi lahat sila, ano, yung plugins mismo hindi pa sila exposed. Pero pag plugin siya na, ano, na, na processing provider, pwede mo siyang mahanap via the Locator. Uh, so, any, any command like uh, uh, dissolve, clip, Ano pa ba? Um, yeah. So, pwede mo siyang mahanap with the locator. Another another thing na maganda is, yun, special sp special bookmarks. Para hindi ka na pumunta dun sa special bookmarks na panel, dito ka na lang. So, yan. Pumunta siya dun. Or, yun. Uh, pwede kang mag-process without leave, even leaving. Or pwede kang gumawa ng stuff without even leaving the locator bar. Uh, pwede ka mag-edit ng features and then you can search for uh, no, active features dun sa map like for example uh, F um, yun, Philippines tadali niya kung nasan yung Pilipinas or for example dito sa um, ginawa natin uh, dito na provinces I can go F and then I can um, add uh, province at province. So that means search for a province na ang value ay, again, albay. Sorry, albay na naman. Then yun, dadalhin niya ako dun. So you can do stuff without even moving your mouse. Just you know, lahat sa, ano, sa, sa, sa locator bar. And dami pang pwedeng gawin. You can even set settings, you know, uh, go to layers and layouts and things like that. So very powerful tool ang locator bar. Uh, and sana mas maraming gumamit kasi yun, sa, sa mga favorite ko talaga nung linabas yung QGIS 3. At hanggang ngayon kahit ako hindi ko pa master lahat ng ano sa locator bar. Uh, and then ito na, ito na yung last. Hopefully um, yun, may, may time pa tayo ng konti. This is one of the things na gustong gusto ko rin tinuturo uh, sa mga sa mga, ano, sa mga sa mga trainings ko. It's the QGIS Atlas. It's uh, map making on, on steroids. Uh, tapos mayroon pang QJS reports which is Atlas on steroids pero that's another topic for another day. QJS Atlas allows you to create you know, multiple maps uh, using the same layout uh, basta meron kang coverage layer. So the coverage layer tells QJS ano yung mga extents nung mapa na gagawin mo. So how does that work? Um, well, if we go to Q, let's say for example itong pre-baked ano natin sa atlas uh, i have these two five two layers um i have an atlas region i have a regional atlas a regional ano uh, shape vector file at uh, ano uh etong ano population ng provinces and i want to create a map sige para hindi ganun ka boring of ano per region pero pinapakita ko province so what I could do siguro is ano, style it individually and then create uh, a map layout and then isa-isa ko silang gagawin. But I can also use, well, uh, um, uh, an atlas. 
So you can create the new print layout, uh, name it, let's name it Atlas, just since Atlas naman siya. What an Atlas does, as I mentioned, is it allows you to create multiple maps or generate multiple maps using just one layout. Uh, basta uh, provided yung coverage layer. So let's add that map uh, first, si dito. Let's add this map. Uh, and then for you, for your para, para sa Atlas natin, itong command na to, ito yung Atlas settings, we can generate an Atlas. It tells QGIS, okay, uh, para dito sa ano na to, print layout na to, I want you to use an Atlas. The coverage layer, as I mentioned, is the layer that defines yung extents ng, ng mga ano natin, ng mga stuff natin, um, ng maimamapa natin. So for this one, sabi ko nga, para hindi naman boring, ayoko namang one map per province. Parang gusto kong, okay, medyo, medyo ano, pakula ko sa boss ko. Ja generate ako ng map using this lay this layer and the regional layer per region siya pero yung naka-style yung yung ano natin yung yung provinces natin so i can have this ano phl regions as my coverage layer and you can hide the coverage layer para hindi siya makita for this one we won't hide it kasi may gagawin tayo maya maya para sa kanya uh, the page name uh, if you're creating it as an ano pwede nating sabihin region dito sa output um, you take this if you want it to be exported in a single file. So one file na maraming, for example, a PDF, maraming pages. Or if you want to export it as multiple files na P PNGs, for example. So for each feature sa coverage layer, merong isang map na magagawa, tapos isang file din naman siya generate. Okay, uh, so anong next na kailangan kong gawin? You have to tell your map na yung extent mo, iko-control siya ng Atlas. So, go to your map, item properties, and dito sa baba, sa under nitong extent, sa baba ng extents, meron dyan controlled by Atlas. So, you have to enable that and then uh, margin around feature. Bahala, depende sa'yo. 10% usually okay naman. Uh, pwede ring best fit. Uh, it depends on you. So, for this one, mag 10% lang tayo. And then, you can uh, just do this. And now, uh, oh, pwede akong mag, ganyan. Pero yun, boring pa rin. Marami pang pwedeng idagdag. Uh, what can we add? Of course, it's a map. We need we need a title, di ba? So we need a title. We add a label. And then, yun. Um, QGS expressions, yung na-mention ko kanina, tulad ng ginawa natin sa geometry generator, they're not just for, ano, they're not just for, for, for the processing. Pwede mo rin silang gamitin sa, sa paggawa ng print layout. So, I can in, insert an expression here. Uh, gusto ko ang value nito, instead of constant, it's, ano, it's, it's an attribute. Uh, it's an, uh, it's based on an attribute. Uh, kumbaga, value. So, pwedeng na, pwedeng uh, field, value, like uh, region. For example, so pwedeng yun yung isulat ko dyan. Kamay, torim, ips, yun. Uh, and then palitan natin ng konti yung pagandahin naman natin yung ating font at ang kanyang sizes. Uh, yan. So, for example, I have this. And then, if I move this, at least magbabago na automatically yung title ko. And you can do that with a lot of other exposed values using QGIS expressions. So, there's that. Um, ano pa? Medyo boring pa rin. Uh, gusto ko lang i-focus yung ano. Gusto ko lang i-focus yung mga yung mga regions pero may mga extraneous or mga extra na provinces na sumasama. Ano yung pwede kong gawin? This is a neat trick na natutunan ko. Uh, you can create uh, a mask. Tingnan nyo. Yung, ito yung extent natin kanina. Uh, Di ba, in-enable natin yung layout extent. So, ito yung extent ngayon ng layout natin. If you change this, uh, that layout would change. And that extent would change. It basically tells you 
nasaan yung active layouts mo. Nasaan yung extent yung active layouts mo. Ayun. So, yun nga. Uh, neat trick that you can do. Uh, you have this atlas coverage. And um, what you can do is create a rule-based symbology using inverted polygons. Diba? So, what you do there is inverted polygon, uh, rule-based, and then you add a filter. Uh, so, gusto ko lang ito yung within, uh, within Atlas uh, feature. And then the filter is, again, it's, it's a QGIS expression. Very powerful. Geometry generators, QGIS expressions. Uh, this expression is basically, is the ID of the feature on the canvas equal to the uh, feature ID of the current selected uh, coverage or feature in the atlas. And if, if so, show it. Diba? Yun yung sinasabi natin. Yan. And now, if I go to here, refresh it, boom. Yun na lang yung makikita. Wala na yung other stuff. Mas, mas malinis. Tingnan yun. Mas maganda. Yun. Last thing. Uh, baka mag-overtime ako. Last thing na lang. Okay. Medyo boring pa siya. Last thing that we can add, siguro a label. So, we can add a label uh, or a legend. And is, isa rin to sa pinaka, well, kung meron akong bagay na annoyed ako with Q, siguro, at the very least, ito yun. When I add a legend, lahat sinasabay niya agad, which is partly annoying. Pero pwede naman, ano, as, mar madali lang naman, ano yun yun. Um, remedyohan. So, it's not that, it's not that, ano, that bad naman. So, yan. I can, no, uh, tanggalin natin yung ito, hindi rin ito kailangan. So, I, we can just rename this as uh, population. Or, we can have, even have that, like, we can, population. Yan. Just remove this, hindi naman siya kailangan. And uh, another neat trick na pwede nyong gawin is, di ba itong legend natin? Um, only show items inside current Atlas feature. So now, I also have a data-driven na symbology. So if it's not there, hindi niya ilalagay. If the, if the values are not there, hindi niya ilalagay. Yan. And of course, I could just then export Atlas as images and then select a directory at pagkatapos nun, yung lahat ng to, so that's, dito nga, konti lang eh, that's 17. But imagine you do this for, for a province, for each province, 80 plus, isang layout, isang run, depende yung gano'ng kabilis mag-render ng, ng images yung computer mo tapos ka agad. You don't have to make Isa, 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 isa. So that, that's, that's great. Uh, yun. I've actually been meaning to make a tutorial about this uh, sa, sa, sa site ko. I just don't have the time right now. Pero yun, hopefully na, ano, nakita natin yung power din ng, ano, ng QGIS Atlas. And that, that's one thing. Kung may isang bagay siguro kayo na makuha, hopefully to, tonight, ito yun. Because it's very powerful. Yun. Yun, maraming salamat. Uh, natapos din. <laughs> Pasensya na kung ano, kung medyo nag-extend ako ng konti. Hopefully, marami tayong uh, nakuha at natutunan. Again, uh, BNHR, you can find me on online, uh, BNHR.xyz website. Uh, Facebook, BNHR.xyz. Twitter, um, bawal yung dot sa pangalan. So, ito na lang, <laughs> BNHR.xyz. Also, on YouTube. Uh, wala pa tayong masyadong subscribers, hindi pa pwede yung actual, <laughs> actual name ng ano. But yeah, uh, bitly, yung bitly link na lang, ilihan may ano. Wala pa rin masyadong content, but I might add some more uh, if, ano, if, if my time. So yun, um, maraming maraming salamat ulit. Uh, with that, sana may mga bago tayong nakuha at natutunan about sa QGIS. Yun, maraming salamat po. Thank you, Ben. Ang galing. Marami akong bagong natutunan. Uh, do you have time for uh, two or three questions? Yun. Sige. Sige, okay. Simple lang iba. Okay, first question. 
Having used Q for years, what's your favorite improvement made to the software? Favorite improvement? Ah, madami. I would probably say yung locator bar. Right now. Uh, sobrang, sobrang, kahit, well, three things. Sige, locator bar, geometry generators, tsaka QGIS expressions. Yung power ng tatlong yun is just, you know, if, if, you, if you learn how to utilize them well, sobrang mind-blowing yung mga kaya mong gawin sa, sa QGIS if you learn how to, to utilize those three things. Tsaka, hindi, hindi, hindi ba naman ako ganun katagal? Feeling ko mas matagal sa akin, mas matagal pa siguro sa akin gumamit si na, si na Maning. Defense, defensive, okay, side like <laughs> defensive side that. Defensive side that. Yun, yung tatlong bagay na yun, if, if you can learn that, those three things, sobrang, sobrang, sobrang ganda nung, sobrang maya, o optimize mo yung paggamit mo ng, <laughs> ng QGIS. Yeah. Someone is asking what version of QGIS you're using. Uh, I, yun, uh, I always use 3.6. I always use the latest release. Uh, so it's 3.16.1. Uh, naka-dark theme ako, kaya ganun. So, mukha itim siya. Um, you can access that via the settings. Sa settings, general, pwede mong palitan yung theme ng, ng QGIS. Pwede mo rin palitan yung font sizes ng icons. So, yun lang yung ginawa ko. Uh, ginawa, binalitan ko yung font. Uh, ginawa kong um, night mapping yung theme. Uh, and then, uh, sizes ng ibang icons, tunik ko din for my ano. Uh, for my purposes. Pero yun, 3.16.1. Uh, usually, latest release yung, yung ginagamit ko for, for stuff. Okay. Um, last question that you answer online. The, the rest you can answer directly yes. on the pad. Uh, <laughs> Sir BNHR, I saw your post, post on the Locate Press sale. What books would you recommend? Hmm. In, 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 Wala akong commission sa, sa ano na yun. Disclaimer <laughs> lang. <laughs> Wala akong commission doon. Uh, but, yeah, um, maganda yung ano, yung Discover QGIS 3.x uh, nila ni Kirk Menke. Uh, it, it, I, nung unang labas nung QGIS 3, uh, I, 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 I got that then sa so, so study. Maganda siya as a self-learning. Pero, at maganda rin siya as a workbook if you, if you want to train people, for example. Yung QGS map design, ito yung mga, may mga kopya ako. Maganda rin uh, if you want to to ano to further your your cartography skills sa QGIS, maganda rin yung QGS map design. So those two I think are ano uh, those two are very general na ano na, na na books on QGIS na I think everyone can can use. Pero hindi ko pa na na ano Pero maganda rin daw yung sa for water resources nila. Yung QGIS for water resources. Although, hindi, hindi ko rin naman kasi masyadong field yun. So, I, I can't really, ano, I can't really comment much on that. Pero yung dalawang yun. Uh, uh, discover QGIS 3.x. Although, 3.6 pa yung ano niya, latest, yung, yung version doon. It's still very good. At yung, ano, yung, yung QGIS map design, second edition. Uh, marami kayong matututunan na, ano, dun, na, na mga bagay. Marami rin kayong matututunan na stuff on QGIS. Yun. So, uh, Ben, thank you. There are several more questions, but I suggest that you, if possible, answer them directly on the pad. Um, thank you very much for your time today. Maski ako na medyo matagal na rin ako hindi gumagamit ng queue. Ang dami kong bagong features na natutunan. Uh, salamat at uh, libre mo kami naturuan ngayon. <laughs> <laughs> maraming, sal- maraming salamat din. So, kung, kung gusto nyo hindi libre, pwede rin. So, you can yeah, message okay. nyo lang ako. Ayan. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat. It, it, it's, ano, it's a pleasure to be here. Next salamat year ulit. Ben. So, that was uh, Ben. Oh, oh, next year daw ulit. That was Ben of BNHR. Um, 